Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. In this video, I'll be answering a reader question who asked about making a line drawing over the top of a photograph. Well, this is our finished image, so let's jump into Photoshop and see how I did it. So I'm using three images here. All of them I've got from Photolia. Obviously, you can take your own, but for ease, I went to my favorite stock site. There should be a link up on screen for you now. I'm going to use this photograph of a dog and I've got this second one which is of a torn piece of card and then a third one which is of a hand holding a piece of paper. In fact all I want is the hand off this one to hold the card but more of that in a little while. Let's go back to our original image. So I'm going to need a copy of this so Control and J that's Command J on a Mac to duplicate or jump the layer and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this second layer into a smart object. So right click just where it says layer one there and choose convert to smart object. Now anything I do will be contained with inside that. If you'd like to know more about smart objects then check out my video last week with an overview of smart objects. Anyway let's crack on. Next I want to give this just a little bit of blur. So let's go to filter and blur and Gaussian blur and I'm going to give this about maybe 10 pixels of blur and click OK. Now because it's a smart object you'll notice that I've got smart filters underneath my layer 1 and sure enough there's Gaussian blur. Now if I double click on the words Gaussian blur I'll go back into that dialog box but next to that you'll see the two lines with the two little arrows. This means I can bring up an extra dialog box so let's jump in and do that. So double click there and I get this blending options dialog box and I can choose all kinds of modes for blending these together including the one I'm going to go for which is divide and when I click on that you'll notice it takes away all the colors and leaves this nice little line drawing. Alrighty, let's click OK. Now what I want to do is take the color away from that. So I'm going to click on this black and white icon here and choose black and white. And that's going to strip the colors out. Now I could, of course, desaturate it. But the beauty of using this is that I can control some of the lines. For example, if I use the yellow here, you can see that I'm thickening the lines around the dog, which is quite helpful. And the cyans, well, they add a little bit of detail to the eye and take a little bit away as well. The blues, we can have a quick look at those again around the eye, it's given a little bit of detail and I can just finesse this to how I want it to be. Those lines are a little bit too thick for me though so let's go back down into our Gaussian blur if I double click then and up comes our original dialog box. I can take this radius down quite a hefty bit to about four maybe five pixels. Okay let's go to about five 5.1 that'll do me. I'm going to click OK. And that's going to be the basis for my pencil drawing. Righto, we need something to put the pencil drawing on but before I do that let's just double click on the adjustments here and the color just to close those down so we can see what we're doing. Before I do that I'm going to have my layer 1 selected and then shift and click on black and white. Right click on those and make those into a smart object just to keep everything nice and neat together. Good. Now that piece of paper that was on this one. So I've got this piece of card. I just need to mask it out. I did that a little bit earlier on with a very quick, well, quick selection actually, I just to make a mask. And now I'm just going to move that across. Now this is much bigger than my original, but that's okay. If I Control and T to transform, and then Control Zero to fit it on screen, I can see what I'm doing. I'm holding Shift down to constrain the proportions but it's not really necessary on this one and then I'm just going to reduce the opacity so as I can see the representation of the dog behind it so as I know how big I want my card and it's going to be about there. I'm going to click the tick. Control zero will bring everything back full screen for me which is quite helpful and I'm going to bring the opacity of that back up again. Excellent, good. Now I need just the line drawing on the card so I'm going to pull down the card layer there we go and then I'm going to press alt or option on a Mac and you'll notice that if I take the mouse between the two layers I get this 
sort of arrow with a square next to it. If you're using earlier versions of Photoshop, that might be two interlinked circles. But once you see either of those, then just click. And there we go. We've now got a clipping mask. So I've clipped just the line drawings into where this layer is, which is the card. So it just appears on the card. Very helpful indeed. Right, now we need the hand. So I'm going to go and get my hand now. And again, I've used the quick selection tool to select the hand, make a mask. There it is. And I'm going to use the move tool just to move this across onto our new one. And again, it's much bigger than I need it. Now, the reason why I can't see it is it's got inside this clipping mask. So I'm going to take that up to the top and then again use the Alt or Option key to unclip it by going between the two layers and clicking. So now I've unclipped it. Good. Control T to transform, Control 0 to fit it on the screen. And then this time I definitely want to hold Shift down while I move this around because I want it to keep the right sort of proportions. And I'm going to get this into position. I do want it to overlap just a little bit. So if I zoom back in now, you can see that I'm overlapping the hand just a bit of my card, both on the left hand side and on the bottom, because I've got this straight line that was caused by the notebook on the original. Click the tick. I'm happy with that. And then I can control zero to bring it back on screen. Now, I've still got these straight edges, not the jagged edges of the card, but that's okay because I made a mask earlier on around my card. It means I know the shape of my card because it's within this mask. And I can select that by pressing Control or Command and then clicking on the mask. You see my icon changes to a pointed finger with a dotted square. There we go. Now if I zoom in here. There we go, we can see where we're working. And then that means I'm just gonna stay within the bounds of my uh, selection there when I add to the mask of my hand. So I make sure that's selected, I go and get a brush, and then I can just very quickly just bang that down, make sure that I'm in normal, of course. And then I can just go along here, that's nice. And then down here as well, just to finish that off. Good. And then Control D to deselect, Control Zero to bring it out on screen, and there we have it now a little bit better. Very good. Now I'm still not happy about this hand that could do with a bit of finessing, so click on the hand layer, and then with my brush I'm going to go back to the overlay mode. Make sure I'm in black. Now this is something that I learned from a book by Matt Klaskowski. Very good for refining masks like this. You see that light line that goes around it. If I now paint, whoops, a daisy. If I now paint on the mask layer, that'll help, wouldn't it? There we go. And you see how I just painted that away, made it darker, a bit more believable. Now this could do with a bit more finessing, but I won't bore you with that. Let's just crop this down a little bit, bring that in, make sure it looks a bit better. Here we go. Click the tick, and we're done in less than 10 minutes. Good. There we go. I'm Eric Renault. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.